Hi, welcome to IBC 2013. My name's Joe O'Halloran, Editor-in-Chief of Rapid TV News, and I'm here with Marios Stiliano, Director of Marketing of Invivio. Hi Marios. Hello, how are you? How is competition changing for pay TV operators and online video? Online video is booming, so why, why is that? Yeah, so uh, I mean, the pay TV market uh, continues to be very competitive uh, across the different segments, across the different uh, serv video service providers. Um, there's still uh, quite a bit of, uh, of, of, of demand and, and, and introduction for new services across the different devices, going from the te television all the way down to the handheld device. Uh, so that's driving quite a bit of, of, of traction. Uh, and, and in parallel, it's, it's, it's kind of increasing availability of content uh, and uh, as a result, the VSPs are looking to react to it and, and, and provide services uh, across the different platforms. The market might be booming, but what challenges are there? And how do these pay TV operators differentiate their services? A, a lot of the challenges for the, for the service providers remain the same. Uh, one of the main challenges that, that they've, they've had and they continue to have is content rights. Uh, depending on the region and in the and, and, and the area, content rights might be slightly different. Uh, and by trying to offer specific services on different devices other than television, content always becomes a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. Uh, as well, in, in, in multi-screen environment or in, in the ABR world, uh, CDN costs still remain fairly high. Uh, this is why we're very excited uh, for HEBC. Um, I think it will be a very, very good uh, uh, point for to address this this cost to drop uh, perhaps half the CDN costs. Uh, so that that is that is something that 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 would definitely help uh, as well with with uh, the cost. Now, in terms of uh, how do they differentiate? A lot of people, a lot of uh, providers continue to provide multi-screen services. They've been doing that for uh, you know the past two years. We've been very successful in that. Uh, I think pretty much by now every main uh, service provider does have a multi-screen offering. Uh, in addition to that, they try to offer more and more uh, on-demand. Uh, viewing habits continue to change. People want to consume content. Uh, Based on their own time, uh, in their own in their own place. Uh, so as a result, uh, the service providers are reacting to that, and they offer a lot more content uh, on an on-demand uh, basis, so that it can be consumed essentially from any device at any time. The last few months have seen the launch of myriad of portable devices, such as smartphones, tablets, also the iPhone 5C, 5S. It has though seen the launch of Google Chromecast and other key products from vendors such as these guy rate. How is that changing the market? Yeah. So uh, the more the more devices that uh, are introduced that support video services, I think the more diverse the consumption of television will be. The, certainly we've seen the, 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 the TV model change, consumption of video has changed as well as there's been several attempts to, to, to change the, the, the traditional television model. Uh, a lot of content owners now have their own master screen offering, a lot of new entrants into the uh, television area, Netflix, Netflix announced recently, uh, or this week in, uh, at, uh, in, in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, so um, introduction of, of devices like this were, were kind of changing the habits and, and, and the viewing habits to allow people to watch content on any device. I think this past year there's been a, a lot of, of, uh, of the trend to bring the experience back into the living room. Chromecast is a good example. Uh, the Roku Roku has a very similar uh, solution with the, with the uh, HDMI uh, uh, stick that goes on the television. Uh, there was a, the new Xbox streaming player with a lot of uh, hope of, of, of TV services as well. So there is, there is once People want to see the content they want to see anytime they want to see it. If they have the option to watch it on a, in their living room versus an iPad, they would pick the living room. The big screen room. Exactly. So, so uh, it's interesting uh, from the from the uh, perspective that we went through the phase of introducing video services to all the ancillary devices, and we continue to have that. That continues to be the case. And now I think we're moving back into into the living room. 
Uh, but the, the delivery medium is slightly changing and potentially the, the, the model of television is changing as well. But given all of that, what did that mean for Invivio? What do you guys need to do to address these challenges? Right, right, right. For us, it's an exciting, exciting time uh, with, with standardization of, of, uh, of new codecs such as HGVC, which we which showcase uh, at IBC this year. Uh, it's an exciting time. Um, some of the challenges we covered uh, earlier, CDN costs, remain problems and, and things such as HEVC help alleviate uh, some of those things for, for, uh, for our customers. You mentioned HEVC. How is that playing out with NVIDIA? So HEVC definitely offers benefits from, from some of the challenges we covered earlier. Uh, it helps with, in the, in the um, multi-screen environment. Uh, it does certainly help with CDN costs, potentially having the cost in, in half. Uh, but as well as uh, it could help in, in the broadcast uh, world as well. Um, if, we, if we talk about HEVC and let's talk about 4K for a second. 4K has been around uh, for a while, but it was not really possible to broadcast 4K because it wasn't very efficient. It was very expensive to, to uh, offer 4K service over satellite, over, over cable. HEVC, I think, makes 4K a reality as well. So it, it is not only attra attractive from a multi-screen perspective, but it's also attractive from a broadcast perspective uh, because it enables people to offer higher resolutions such as 4K to their customers. 4K is certainly one of the themes of this year's show. How fast do you think that market is developing? Yeah. So anytime with a new codec, new resolution, I think there is there's a, 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 a chain of events that needs to happen. Uh, we started with 4K televisions, so they're still fairly expensive. Uh, however, I see as, 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 as time passes, the television sets will get cheaper, people will afford them, and that will drive kind of, a, of, of, a, of, of, of the chain reaction. There's already uh, customers of ours that are talking about uh, providing 4K to their, to their, uh, to their customers. Uh, we see a lot of content owners starting to produce and continue to produce 4K content. So the content is becoming more, more available. The infrastructure, we support uh, 4K, 4K HEVC. So the infrastructure is starting to materialize. And I think by the time of uh, World Cup next year, we should be able to offer, video service providers should be able to offer some, uh, some 4K channels to their, to their clients. Mario, you mentioned 2014. If we're here in 2014, how different a place is it going to be? So we'll certainly see a lot more, uh, we'll, we'll see 4K and HBC materializing a lot more by the end, uh, end of next year. Um, already this year, we're, 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 we see deployments happening in the multi-screen uh, environment with HEVC, but as time gets by and as TV sets get cheaper, as content becomes more available, we'll see a lot more 4K in the broadcast uh, world over the different uh, mediums, satellite or, or cable. How about monetization? Is this, should next year be the year of all this really pays off? Sure. So, so I mean, this year already and going into next year, we see a lot more uh, growth and, and, and potential uh, revenue expansion for us in the in the anytime TV arena. Uh, a lot, a lot of our customers are deploying services such as network PVR, uh, and and going into next year, we see a lot of these deployments materializing in terms of ad insertion. Ad insertion enables um, the, the video service provider to monetize. Uh, the deployment and it allows to target uh, specific advertising ad advertisements to specific customers. So it's a, it's a very interesting um, potential as well into next year. So it's going to be a better looking and richer business. It should be. Marios, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.